Great Sand Dunes National Park is a massive dune field in southern Colorado surrounded by diverse, rugged wilderness. This 30 square mile dune field sits among thousands of acres of protected land in the National Park and neighboring National Preserve, containing mountains, wetlands, forests, grasslands, and obviously, sand dunes. Honestly, I was worried the park would be boring, like it's just sand, right? But luckily, I was so wrong and there's far more to see and do in the Great Sand Dunes than you might think. That's why today, we're counting down the 10 best things to do in the Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve. Number 10, Conquer the Dunes. Besides hitting up the old visitor center, the first thing you'll probably wanna do is venture into the dune field. You can park at the visitor center or at the convenient and appropriately named Dunes parking lot. To reach the dunes, you'll have to cross Medino Creek, which is at its highest during the spring due to snowmelt from the mountains. From there, you'll have seemingly endless amounts of sand to explore, though there are no official trails in the dune field. High Dune, which is ironically not the highest or tallest dune in the park, rises around 700 feet and has the most direct route from the parking lot. Star Dune is the second tallest in the park at 736 feet tall while Hidden Dune is the tallest not just in the park but in the entire United States at 741 feet. Though the sand is constantly shifting and these numbers do fluctuate. By the way, Hidden Dune got its name because it's in a more remote part of the park that's hard to see even from the top of the first row of dunes. 9. Sandboard and Sled Down the Dunes By far the most popular thing to do is go sledding or sandboarding down the dunes. There's a rental station just before the southern entrance of the park where you can rent boards for around $20 a day. We chose the sled, but the stand-up sandboards were also popular and let you carve up the sand much like snowboarding. The rental shop also gives you wax for the bottom of your board, so make sure you wax before every run. It makes a big difference. Next up, take a dip. You might think with all this sand that the park is a dry desert, but thanks to the mountain snowmelt and some natural springs, there's actually many bodies of water to enjoy, including lakes, creeks, and even a waterfall. Zapata Falls is a hidden gem just south of the park, tucked away in the foothills of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains. It requires a short trek, but you'll have to cross some chilly streams to reach the 25-foot waterfall. The most obvious body of water at Great Sand Dunes is Medino Creek, in between the dunes and the parking lot. Depending on the time of year, this creek could be thick and roaring or just a barely noticeable trickle. And in the winter, it's frozen. There are some creeks in the dunes themselves, including Big Spring Creek, which flows from Indian Spring. There's also Little Spring Creek, Dead Man Creek, which sounds a little ominous in my opinion, and Sand Creek, which starts in the mountains and flows through the dunes. Southwest of the dunes are some lakes. There's also plenty of water in the mountains including some alpine lakes that we'll cover later. Number 7. Watch the wildlife. Despite the dunes looking like an empty landscape full of sand, more sand, and nothing but sand, Great Sand Dunes National Park and the neighboring mountainous preserve are full of rich and diverse ecosystems. There are large mammals like elk, bison, pronghorn, black bears, and even the occasional mountain lion. There's also bobcats, coyotes, and plenty of smaller mammals. And that's not all, bird watchers and rangers have recorded over 300 bird species here. One small creature well adapted for life in the dunes is the giant sand treader camel cricket. Keep an eye out for these little guys. And it should go without saying, but it's best to appreciate all these animals from a distance. Just because you love a bison doesn't mean it'll love you back. Number 6. Venture into the mountains and alpine trails. Dunes Overlook Trail is a quick half mile hike to a viewpoint at the foot of the Sangre de Cristo Mountains looking over the dune field. It's a great option for those who want to experience the beauty of the park without the struggle of a longer, more intense hike. Mosca Pass Trail is a tough but rewarding hike that winds along a small forested creek leading to Mosca Pass, an old route used by Native Americans and early settlers to access the valley. Mosca Pass Trail has great views of the dune field, mountains, and San Luis Valley. The trail is just over 6 miles out and back with 1,400 feet of elevation gain. Some of the most scenic places in the mountains can only be reached with a high clearance four-wheel drive vehicle. Bringing us to our next thing to do, explore the 4x4 trails. Medino Lake can be accessed with a four-wheel drive vehicle via Medino Pass. After parking at the trailhead, 
you'll climb 2,000 feet through forest, ending at the beautiful Alpine Medano Lake. If you're feeling extra ambitious, you can even summit Mount Harold, which rises 13,297 feet for amazing views over the dune field. The Sand Creek Lakes are another group of alpine lakes that can only be reached with the high clearance four-wheel drive vehicle and a long hike. The two and a half hour drive to Music Pass, followed by an eight mile hike, ascends through various ecosystems including pinyon juniper forest, meadows, and alpine tundra. You might even catch the wildflowers blooming in the summer months. For some routes closer to the dunes, check out Point of No Return, the Sand Pit, and Castle Creek. If you don't have your own vehicle, there are a few Jeep rental companies nearby, or just take one of the guided Jeep tours. Number four, join a guided tour. Speaking of tours, guided tours are one of the best ways to explore and learn about the park, and they're often family friendly. Besides the 4x4 Jeep tours, there are also guided walking tours and even tours riding on horseback. There are several private tour companies, but you can also join official programs through the park service. 3. Attend a Ranger Program Great Sand Dunes Ranger Programs are a great way to learn about the national park. They offer guided walks and classroom sessions that cover everything from plants and animals adapted to live in the harsh environment, to the history of indigenous cultures of the region, and even the geological processes that form the dunes. Ranger programs are a fun and family-friendly way to explore the dunes and get a dose of culture while you're at it. Number 2. Explore the backcountry via the Liberty Gate. While the southern portion of the national park can get so crowded it's nearly impossible to park, the north side benefits from far fewer people. The Liberty Gate is a great starting point for exploring the park's more remote backcountry, including foothills, mountains, and of course the massive dune field. You'll take two-track road to connect with the sand ramp trail, which lets you access backpacking sites along the foothills. While you don't gain elevation, it is a sandy route, so this hike is serious and grueling. Sand Ramp Trail stretches 11 miles all the way to Loop 2 of the campground, or at Point of No Return parking area. And number one, camp in the National Park. Neighboring towns are small, far away, and have limited accommodations, so you might as well stay right in the middle of the action. Camping might be the best way to truly experience what the National Park has to offer. Here's your chance to sleep at the foothills of the mountains with the great view of the dunes and maybe do a little stargazing after the sun goes down. According to the National Park Service, the combo of dry air, little light pollution, and high elevation helped certify Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve as an international dark sky park, meaning it's one of the best places in the world to stargaze at night. You can park an RV or set up a tent at Pinion Flats, the in-park campground that has picnic tables and restrooms. Or if you're feeling adventurous, you can do more rustic backcountry camping, like in the dunes or designated backpacking areas near Medino Pass Primitive Road. The latter two are only recommended for serious and experienced outdoors folks, because amenities in the backcountry are basically non-existent the weather pretty hostile most of the year, and there's those lovely but potentially dangerous animals we talked about earlier. By the way, you'll need a backcountry permit to camp in the park. No matter your camping style, it's a great way to get fully immersed in the gem that is Great Sand Dunes National Park. Hope you found this guide helpful. Love you all, and have a great day.